Hi, and welcome to the Poke Popcast. Today we're going to be talking about shuffling in the Pokemon trading card game. So, shuffling is actually one of the reasons that I started uh, this as a as a video podcast as opposed to an audio only podcast. And the reason for that is uh, I, I one of the major problems that players and judges encounter in the Pokemon trading card game is bad shuffling. And bad shuffling falls into a couple of different categories. It falls into the category of people who don't know how to shuffle well and people who do know how to shuffle well but use it to cheat. So I'm not going to get into cheating too much here. I'm going to touch on it a little bit. I more, in this case, want to talk about the proper way to shuffle, what, what are proper ways, what are not proper ways, what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, and I will touch on a little bit about what to make sure you do to cut down on being taken advantage of by someone who's improperly shuffling, whether on purpose or even by accident. So, uh, first off, if we look at the uh, guidelines, so the document that covers shuffling in Pokemon is the Trading Card Game Rules and Formats document, uh, specifically Section 6. Now, the requirement for a trading card game deck is that it be fully randomized uh, at all times unless there is a specific card effect that has put some kind of order onto your card. Uh, now randomized is not the same as evenly distributed. A lot of people make that error. So evenly distributed is, you know, the perfect hand that you want to get is you want to have a hand that has some Pokemon, some energy, some trainers, so that on each turn you get to do all those different things. And a perfect distribution gives you one or two energy cards, one or two Pokemon, and a lot of different trainers. And one of the ways of improper shuffling gets you that perfect distribution, but that's not random. The requirement in the rules is that the deck has to be randomized. Randomized is not the same as evenly distributed. Okay, so the next thing the, the document talks about is how do you achieve randomness. And it basically says that you can riffle shuffle, pile shuffle, or otherwise shuffle to achieve randomness. Uh, we're going to talk about later on in, in, the, in the cast here... Um, about the different ways of shuffling and which ones you need to do uh, and which ones you can do but you also will need to do the ones that give good randomization. Uh, the other requirement is that the shuffling has to be done in the presence of your opponent. Okay, So if you're, you sit down, your opponent's not there yet, you start shuffling and setting up, you get your shuffling done and your opponent shows up and you hand it to him to, to cut the deck, that's no good. He doesn't know how much shuffling you did. He doesn't know if you stack the deck. It has to be done in your opponent's presence. Uh, it has to be done in a reasonable time. That's it. That says reasonable time. Uh, the penalty guidelines talk about a two-minute setup and shuffles mid-game. So you've done a search for a specific card. Uh, mid-game search, uh, you have 15 seconds to shuffle. Now, you're generally given. Judges generally give players a, a longer period of time for the first search of a deck during the game because they know that during that first search you're, you're searching through your deck to figure out what cards are in your prizes because that's going to have a big impact on how you play. So you're definitely given some leeway during the first search to, to figure out uh, what cards you have access to and what cards you don't have access to. However, after that, Mid-game searches, anytime you're shuffling your deck mid-game, is supposed to be quick. You're not doing a full, complete randomization of the deck. It's, it's assumed that you haven't done a lot of ordering of the deck. Uh, so 15 seconds is per the guidelines. The other requirement that they have in the guidelines is that you do not harm or reveal the cards. This is especially important, not revealing your own cards to your opponent, but don't harm your opponent's cards. Treat their cards just as you treat your cards with respect. Treat your opponent's cards with respect. Even if you don't treat your own cards with respect, you must treat your opponent's cards with respect because they're not your cards. 
So we'll talk about in shuffling and a couple of different ways of shuffling about making sure that you don't damage the cards and don't damage the sleeves. Uh, generally, I use the same sleeves for a year at a time. I don't have to go through a lot of sleeves uh, because I shuffle in a way that doesn't damage the cards. And, and you can do that too. Uh, it does not take long to learn how to shuffle properly if you take the time to do it. If you've been playing for any period of time, you can take an hour and practice shuffling and, and shuffle well. And it's going to be time well spent because uh, it's going to impact your gameplay. You're going to be much faster when you're playing, so you're going to have more time to, to play the game. And uh, you're not going to be damaging your cards as much. All right, the next step is after you've shuffled, you offer the deck to your opponent to cut. Now, I recommend that everyone always cut. It is not a matter of trusting your opponent. When I play my own children, I cut their decks. I expect them to cut my decks. And you want to get in the habit of always cutting your opponent's deck. The reason is, is once in a while, you're going to run into an opponent who has stacked his deck, who has put a card that he wants up on the top of the deck, and you may not know who that opponent is. But if you always cut your opponent's deck, then you don't have to worry about figuring out if this is the person who has stacked his deck or not. So always, always, always cut. Now, uh, when an opponent offers their deck to you to be cut, you actually have a choice of two different things you can do. One is you can cut, and we'll just demonstrate a simple cut here. So a cut is you take a section of the deck and switch it with the top and bottom. Now, an important thing when you are doing cuts is don't always cut the same. If you're always cutting from the middle or you're always cutting from near the, the place, if you are encountering a player who is cheating, they can stack or place the card that they want near where your cut is if you're always cutting the same. So you want to vary. Sometimes you're cutting near the top, sometimes you're cutting near the bottom, sometimes you're cutting in the middle. Vary where you cut so your opponent cannot predict where you're going to cut from. Okay. Now, your opponent offers to cut. One choice is to cut, and then you're done. And now this deck is going to be drawn from or goes back, back uh, in, in the deck spot. The other choice you have is you can shuffle your opponent's deck when it is offered a cut. Uh, if you do that shuffle, it needs to be uh, quick, uh, done done with uh, speed, and you can't take a lot of time doing it. So it's not going to be seven riffle shuffle, uh, but it would destroy any kind of stacking that might have happened there. Now, if you do shuffle your opponent's deck, they get the final cut. Okay, They don't get to shuffle again. They just get one final cut, and that would be the end of it. The other final thing that can be done is if under some circumstance a judge had to come and shuffle a deck either at the opponent's request or uh, a penalty was being, uh, something was being done to correct the game state and as part of that the deck had to be shuffled. So if the judge comes and shuffles the deck, his or her shuffle is not cut. Once the judge shuffles the deck, that is it, it is put down and there is not a cut done of the judge's uh, shuffle. And that's because the assumption is, is that the judge is not stacking the deck. Now, before we start looking at some specific uh, shuffles, uh, a couple of important things to be aware of that when you shuffle, when you are manipulating your deck, um, anytime you uh, look at, so I'm looking at cards now, right? Anytime you look at cards in your deck, that has now totally negated any shuffling you did. So if you see a player where they are shuffling, and instead of shuffling with the cards, let's see if we can do this, with the cards face down, and I'm doing it kind of up in the air here, so the cards are away from me. So if, if I'm not looking at the cards now, the cards are facing back from me, that's good. But occasionally... I've actually seen players do it where, so now here's the card backs facing you, so that means the card faces are facing me. I've occasionally seen players shuffle 
where they're looking at the cards and and their reasoning is well the the bend of the cards um, I'm bending in the opposite way to so that the cards don't get all bendy well that's all nice and well and good about your bend of your cards but you're totally not randomizing your cards when you're doing that uh, you can't look at your cards while you're shuffling anytime you see the faces of the cards or sometimes you'll see someone shuffle 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 and then they'll just like glance at either the bottom of the card, so they'll look at the bottom of the last bottom card of the deck, or, or you know, they'll just glance through to see if the cards are spread out well. Well, now you've just totally destroyed any shuffling you did, and you have to start all over again. Uh, and you may get a penalty for looking at cards. Uh, you know, if you're taking now taking a longer time to shuffle because you've wasted time by shuffling and then looking at your at your deck. Uh, that's totally improper. Shuffling is done without, you know, because the goal is not to have a well distributed deck. The goal is to have a random deck. Again, random is not well distributed, not necessarily. It may be well distributed, but it may not. You don't know. Random, you could have your four cards of the same type all in a row, right? People play poker, they get four of a kind. It could happen. The other thing that can happen is uh, when you're doing a deck search, so I'm searching my deck for a specific card, and while I'm doing that, maybe I take a specific card and move it someplace in the deck, and I find this card, and I move that somewhere in the deck. So now I've got a couple of cards at the bottom of the deck that weren't there before. Uh, once you've done that, now this is what people call declumping sometimes, because they find two cards the same that are right next to each other in the deck and they don't like that so they're going to declump them well as soon as you've declumped it you now make have to make sure that you do a full shuffle because you have changed you have unrandomized your deck it is no longer random and you need to make sure it is random you you cannot move cards around or look at cards and then do just a tiny little shuffle and think you're good no you'll get a penalty uh, we uh, judges are focusing on poor shuffling now and if you go to a major event I can't speak for a local tournament you have a range of efficiency at, at local events but at larger events judges are on the lookout for bad shuffling and penalties will be issued alright so before we look at the examples of uh, shuffling let's just talk in general about uh, the three basic types of shuffling uh, that you that you may encounter or that you may find yourself doing uh, and their relative effectiveness at, at creating randomization. All right. So first off, the simplest type of shuffle uh, that is uh, doable by uh, players that have very limited uh, skill with manipulating cards are what they call is called pile shuffling. And uh, and we'll see in the video here uh, that when you pile shuffle. Uh, you're basically creating stacks of cards and moving cards that had been next to each other into these various piles. Now, the problem, pile shuffling is good for one thing. Number one, it, it's recommended, a lot of people like to do it um, at the beginning of a game or at the end of a game uh, to make sure that you have all of your cards still. It's very common, especially with a stadium card that's in the center of the play area, to, for that to get left behind or the other player to take it by accident. And now suddenly you either have, if you took it, you have 61 cards, or if you didn't take it and it was your card, you now have 59 cards. Either case, it's an illegal deck situation, especially if players have similar looking sleeves. So the pile shuffle allows you to make sure that you have all of your cards. Sometimes cards get left in the deck box, things happen. Uh, a common count is to make six piles. Uh, now, the important thing with pile shuffling is, in and of itself, it is not a sufficient, it is not a randomization at all, really. If you, if you think about it, you're basically creating an order of the cards. Uh, you're, you're creating that evenly distributed order, potentially. Uh, so if someone only does pile shuffling, their deck is not actually shuffled at all. It is just distributed. So it's good for checking the number of cards you have. It is good as one way, as long as you do 
one of the other ways which we're going to say you must do. Okay, so that's that's the first type of shuffling. Now the Hindu shuffle is very popular uh, with uh, Japanese players. Some some players refer to it as the Japanese shuffle, uh, and, and as we're seeing in the video, uh, that's basically you're taking groups of cards from the center of the deck or the bottom of the deck or some section from the from the deck, placing them on top, and for someone who, who does who can do this very well, it's it's a very fast movement, and and it looks, I don't know if I want to say impressive, but it looks like they're randomizing the deck. In actual fact, they're not really randomizing the deck. Mathematically speaking, uh, you would need to do on the order of a thousand Hindu shuffles or Japanese shuffles to achieve the randomness of the last two types of shuffling that we're going to talk about. So it is not an efficient way of shuffling. It is actually a way of maintaining the even distribution of your deck. So because you're taking groups of cards. So if uh, you have an energy of Pokemon and a trainer and you're taking a group of cards, that now is still an energy of Pokemon and a trainer for the most part. Uh, there is some break to that distribution because you're not necessarily grabbing even numbers of, of those groupings but a lot of that's going to get maintained and that is not random uh, so there's that that and also uh, what's called the overhand shuffle which you'll see players do as well again it's it's basically a large number of cuts and a large number of cuts are cuts they're not shuffles so by themselves they are not sufficient to create a randomized deck. They're legal, you can do them, but they are not sufficient in and of themselves to create a randomized deck. So the final two methods of shuffling that we're going to show and look at here are um, the riffle shuffle and the mash or smash shuffle. Now with the riffle shuffle and, and we'll take a look at a little more detail here. With the Riffle Shuffle, you are basically inter interweaving the two halves of the deck. So large number of cards are being separated. You want to be, be respectful of your opponent's cards. You don't want to bend them too much. That's too much bend. A slight bend, you don't even need to bend. Basically, you allow the cards fall and as you can see I'm not bending them. So you allow the cards to fall and you're not damaging the cards. Okay? So when you ripple, now I'm bending them a bit more here because I'm doing it vertically. You can't allow them to, you can't have them fall, but showing you vertically, you can see that the cards are interleaving. It's not a perfect weave. You don't want to do a perfect weave because if you're doing a perfect weave, then that's a magician trick and you can wind up uh, controlling the shuffle. So you want a bit of randomness in there. But as you're shuffling down here, you're letting the cards fall. So there's not a lot of pressure on the center. There is slight as you're holding the card. So you're holding it control here, control with your thumb. And slight control with here, but you're not pushing too much, just a slight push. And just by controlling it here, you don't even really need that. You just allow, by rolling your thumb, you're allowing the cards to fall. That's really the trick of it. The trick is not so much pushing as rolling. Here, I'll even push here, so I'm not pushing at all. You will roll your thumb back to allow the cards to fall down, and as they're falling down, they interleave with the cards that are, that are falling on the other side. Now basically, the finger here is more just to control, give a little bit of uh, control, control how the fall is happening. But you can even, I mean, you do need to have a slight, you don't want it bending the wrong way, you want it a slight, and then they interleave. Okay, and that's a good shuffle. This is the best uh, way of, of shuffling cards, of getting a randomized deck. Especially if you mix in a few different ways of shuffling at, together. right? If you're always doing one type of shuffle, 
there's a chance of you getting back to a starting point. Uh, if you're mixing in different methods of shuffling, that's less likely to happen. Um, similarly, the mash or smash shuffle, you wind up with uh, the similar situation happening where, where individual cards are being inserted from one half of the deck into the other half of the deck. The method is slightly different because they're being smashed or mashed together as opposed to interleave, interweaved. Uh, but you're getting a similar result. And, and so both of those methods uh, are needed to create a randomized deck. So if a judge is watching someone shuffle and they see pile shuffling and Hindu shuffling or overhand shuffling, but they're not seeing either mass shuffling or uh, riffle shuffling, then that deck is, is going to get called as being not random. So those are the important two to use, mass shuffling and, and riffle shuffle. All right, so in summary, here's the points to remember. At some point in your shuffle, you need to mass shuffle or riffle shuffle. If you haven't done that, you haven't really randomized your deck. Number two, don't keep the same card on the top or bottom. Alternate how you're placing your cards so that you are changing what cards are on the top and bottom. Number three, always cut your opponent's deck or even shuffle it you're allowed to shuffle it but also when you cut your opponent's deck always make sure that you're cutting from different places don't always cut from the same place if your opponent has declined to cut your deck don't be oh I'm gonna be polite and not cut his deck either cut his deck in a lot of cases someone who's cheating will not cut your deck to incent you to not cut theirs as well. And the final point I'm going to leave you with here is that if something doesn't feel right, if something doesn't seem right, if your opponent looks like they've manipulated cards in a way that uh, you don't like, call a judge. We want judges, judges want to find people who are not handling the cards right either on purpose or by accident and if it's by accident they'll correct the judge will correct the player and note it and move on and the player hopefully will have learned and, and corrected their action however if the same player is observed doing the same thing again and again from not just from one tournament uh, within the same tournament in various rounds but from one tournament to another tournament that tends to show that that player is doing it on purpose and we want to know about those things so we can take care of them. So help judges help you. All right. Uh, we'll talk more about shuffling in future Pokey Popcasts. Uh, we'll get into some more details about specific things, especially about looking for cheating and things like that. But uh, this is a good basic overview, especially uh, for those who don't really know what the requirements are. Now you do. So go out there, enjoy, and uh, have fun. Take care.